Primo Levi was born in Turin, Italy on July 13, 1919, and lived there with his entire life. He grew up in a family of four, however his parents did not get along well. Primo's home life was difficult, as his mother, Esther, did not love him. His father, an engineer, often had affairs with other women. Primo was a victim of constant bullying, but later graduated in 1941 with honors in chemistry amid the rise of fascism in his own country. He was unfortunately captured by the fascist forces while acting in a partisan band which was in charge of harassing and sabotaging the plots of enemy forces. Primo was sent to an Italian prison camp in Fasoli in January of 1944. Eventually, he was deported to Auschwitz, where he was able to survive one year at the death camp, later being liberated in 1945 by the Red Army. From the almost 650 Italian Jews that were deported along with Primo, only 23 were liberated. After his liberation, Primo wrote a book explaining his experiences and originally titled it, If This Is a Man. Later, Various copies had been made, and the title was changed to Survival in Auschwitz. Some other books by him are The Truce and The Periodic Table. Sadly, Primo committed suicide on April 11, 1987. His writings are still highly circulated, as they tell the story of his entire survival throughout Auschwitz. A couple of years following the Holocaust, Primo Levi is teaching a 10th grade chemistry class in his hometown of Turin, Italy. In tomorrow's class, we will learn about the reaction that takes place when hydrogen and chloride are mixed. Any questions? Um. Yeah, it's like wonders and numbers and stuff. I didn't get it, it's so weird. Bye, boys. Eagles. See me after school, please. The remainder of the school day flew by for the two boys, as they were eager to hear what Mr. Levy was going to say to them. However, for Primo, this day was a nightmare, as he began to recall all of the horrific memories from the Holocaust, which he will tell the two curious boys. I heard you boys. I overheard you boys talking about my tattoo. Yeah, what is it? How'd you get it? Let me tell you. It is the end of January 1944, and Primo Levi arrives at the detention camp Fasoli. Get in there. Huh. Sorry, sir. Stand up. Go. Listen, you listen to me. No one else but me. Every single morning you wake up at the same time. If you're not up, I'm going to kill ten random people. You hear me? Yes, sir. What? Yes, sir. Okay. Commissar, may I have a word? This place is an absolute dump. You Italians should be ashamed of yourself, Commissar. I'm sorry, sir. We will do our best to improve organization of this establishment. We'll make sure all the Jews are ready by tomorrow. We're deporting them next morning. Where, where are you taking them? I told you all you need and could know. Oh, thank you, sir. That night, the prisoners prepare for the mysterious journey ahead of them. Some prayed, while others heavily drank. They were completely clueless about the journey ahead of them. So many questions raced through their minds. Where are we going? Will it be safe? Are they setting us free? When will we return to our homes? The prisoners then gathered for roll call the next morning. Bring over the prisoner. In line, you filthy Jew. Is that all of them? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Before being liquidated into the train cars, the Jews discussed where they would be taken. Some had heard rumors of death camps, but others were clueless. The German SS officers proceeded to move the mass amount of Jews onto crowded train cars, where they remained in the station until the evening. Eventually, they departed. Rumors of their destination started to spread within the car. Where could they possibly be taking us? I, I have no idea. They could, I heard of a place in, in Auschwitz, Poland. They could be taking us there. It is Auschwitz, the infamous death camp. We're all doomed. You're taking us all the way to Poland? Possibly. Whatever, I just hope the ride's quick so I don't have to be on that miserable train for a while. I hope the ride there is short so the ride back won't be long. Me too. There will be no return ride. 
Should I tell them? No, it will create too much fear and commotion. The train arrives at its destination, Auschwitz. The prisoners are rushed out of the cars. German SS guards continue to instruct the frantic Jews to form lines. Nobody knows it, but this moment will determine who lives and who is sent to the gas chambers. Each person's life is in the hands of a German SS guard assigned to the first selection. How old are you? Fifty. Can you work? No, I have a bad back. That way. How old are you? Twenty-four. Occupation? Chemist. Can you work? Yes. Are you ill? No. How old are you? Eighteen. Can you work? Bad ankle, but I can still work. Primo Levi turns around to see the children, women, and men incapable of work being directed to the left, to the gas chambers, to their death. After a short ride in a covered truck, the 125 men capable of work entered iron gates which read, Arbeit macht free. Work sets you free. They are guided into a small dark room where they are told to wait. The remaining prisoners have been deprived of food and water for four days. Look, a faucet! Wait, don't drink from it! It says warning! Let me drink. <coughs> this water is disgusting. It reeks of swamp. Get in rooms right now. Undress and take off your shoes. The SS guard collects all 90 pairs of shoes. Soon after, four men enter with razors, soap, brushes, and clippers. They are showered and forced to remain in the room with two inches of chilled water at their feet. All of the men are left to wait, shivering. The same German guard enters the room. Now that you're all showered, get in line right here. You're up first. Primo Levi enters a dark, cramped room. He is walked to an SS guard sitting with tattoo equipment. Sir, please, what is happening? Where are the women and children? You don't need to know that. Shut your mouth. Let's go. Sit. Please tell me what's happening. Any explanation will do. Shut up and give me your left arm. You know, one seven four five one seven. Get up, let's go. I said get up, let's go. Bring in the next prisoner. Next. Night falls and the prisoners are grouped up once more. They are assigned to Block 30, their barracks. Night falls as Primo turns over in his bunk. He closes his eyes and falls asleep after an exhausting day, unaware of what is to come next. And that's my story. Now that I think of it, I should write a book about this. It's a good idea. The world should hear about this. They need to know what happened. Mm -hmm. The truth.